and all the songs that I've written about women and like my current relationship is so just like I love her so much and I'm so in love and she's magic and then the songs I've written about men like while dating them has been like God, oh, he's a bit annoying. <laughs> Well, we all know God is a freak from that one pitch PRC song, but he better close his eyes because he doesn't want to watch what's about to happen on this couch. Peach PRC joins us here on DNM. Welcome. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Fresh off the back of your first Mardi Gras yes. in the parade. Yes. How did we find it? Full honest review. Am I allowed to give a full honest review? <laughs> yeah, as honest as we can allow. <laughs> it was gay. <laughs> it was interesting. It was very um, different than what I was expecting. I thought yeah. it would be a lot more like... There was a lot of people, but they were actually very like deadpan in the face. <laughs> like, like going down the floor. Everybody was like serious. I was like, oh. I saw that you were just like shouting lesbian. I, was, I, was, I had a flag and I was like, you're gay and you're gay. And I was like, lesbian. And everyone was like... There was definitely one person though in that crowd, I'm sure at least it was like, actually? They were like, I have to think yeah. about it actually. <laughs> now that I think about it, I think that that's such like a... A common occurrence, so with like whether it be World Pride, whether it be like a queer event, whatever, that people you like. So how do you find it? And then a queer person would be like, "Yeah, I no, found it for sure. It yeah. was, it it happened. It <laughs> yeah. was there." Um, but I mean, aside from that, you are doing a lot for World Pride. You mm-hmm. have the Rainbow Republic show. Yes. What are you most looking forward to? I mean, I'm sure that most of the audiences that you perform to are gay as hell, but mm-hmm. particularly like a World Pride audience. Like, yeah. what are you most looking forward to with that? I think it's going to be like nothing I've done before, like at least so far. Like I think at least at my shows and even at festivals and stuff where people come to see me, everybody is in all pink. Like at the very front, you have mm-hmm. all the pink people, lots of glitter. And I think it'll... Hopefully just be like that, but like on steroids, just like amped up. So it'll be really fun. And I did love that about the Pride Festival. Um, and it was like, I loved that. Like I loved like the whole atmosphere of it and the community and like seeing everybody all in one place together. It was very like beautiful and welcoming and accepting. It was just the actual float that was a bit how you go on, but everything else, was, everything else was great. <laughs> We're talking about all four. It's a bit, um, it's crazy to watch on the during the parade the people dancing as well. And there's so much just high energy. Yeah. You're almost like, is this real? It's like a flash mob. Like, yeah. yeah I Your dream. Like, I like Jason Derulo was going to come out and be like, where are you, man? And they were like, going off. <laughs> It was ideal, though, honestly, the sitting down situation. Kind of, yeah, we were up in a scissor lift, so we were, like, removed from the it's crowd. Lift, I love it. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Had to. But, um, yeah, like, uh, I mean, aside from World Pride and beyond Mardi Gras, um, obviously you've had to come to, I guess, terms with your identity and particularly, like, your sexuality in a public space, which to me sounds terrifying. Mm. How do you... And how do you navigate that? Like, how do you decide what you're keeping to yourself and what you're telling the... I mean, TikTok is so specifically, like, you, you don't know who your audience is. Like, mm-hmm. you're putting something out and maybe if it's on another platform, you're like, okay, it's, like, to my people, to my audience or whoever. How do you, yeah, navigate telling such a massive horde of people? Yeah, it's it's pretty daunting, I think, because, like, it took me a, a long time because I felt like I needed to be, like, 100% sure, which I feel like a lot of people aren't like when they first work out their sexuality like it takes a long time and I think people it can you know vary for people as they work things out so I was a bit scared that like I would say something very definite and then like something might change and I've just gone and told the whole world something but so it took me a long time I had to wait till I was like 100% sure on what I was saying but um yeah and obviously everybody has something to say about everything so it can be a lot but um I think I was pretty fortunate with my I like think the majority was positive and it was a lot of my like, core audience. So it was really lovely when I came out. It really wasn't a lot of backlash or anything negative. Yeah. And I loved the videos as well that you've been making, particularly about like your hyper feminine image and mm. the and femininity and the way that that ties into like, particularly like lesbianism and queer culture and, and not seeing that like represented in media when we were growing up. And yeah. I feel that like so deeply. How important is that to you as well to like, to really show that like, I mean, obviously that feminine side is is you, so mm. you're gonna be showing it, but yeah. What, do, what does that mean to maybe like younger Peach to yeah, I, see that? I think it would have changed a lot for me like seeing something like that younger and in a way that wasn't like from, like written from a male's perspective, that was like a sexualized sort of trope. And it was more like so, like a genuine connection and love that a feminine woman had for another woman but um 
I think it's really nice to see now, like in my comments, people realizing their own sexuality from me being like, oh, I didn't think that I could be lesbian because I'm so feminine and straight passing and seeing you has made me realize a lot. So that's really nice to see. That's yeah. really sweet. Mm. And outside, I, I guess, the worlds of, of um, sexuality as a whole, just living, I guess, in the public eye on a platform, what is the experience like? Do you feel like you're ever having to do something different or be someone different? Sometimes, yeah. I think more so now than it, it was Sorry, um, when I kind of first started. When I first started online, it was kind of just like, this is... You know, I didn't really filter anything or hold anything back. And then after a while, it was like, um, now, you know, it's, it's, I have to be very careful about things, and which is a good thing in some ways where it's like it's, it's taught me a lot. I've learned a lot about, um, about all kinds of people and things that I wouldn't have thought about if someone didn't bring it to my attention. I don't know. I think I'm still authentic, but just have to be very mindful, I think, now. Yeah. What do you think about, like, a... Uh, what, what, what would you call a fans? You know, like how p- artists have like fan- you, I Spice has the Spice Cabinet. What yeah. would you call a Peach PRC fan? Is there a name for it? Yeah, well, they originally called themselves the Peach Pit, and then oh, the Peach Pit. Yeah, and then now, like at shows, people have signs sometimes that say "Forever a Silver Can" or like "I'm a Silver Can" because of the Forever Drunk lyric, where oh. I say "Dancing over Silver Cans, pretending they're adoring fans." So oh I my think that's god! Really cool. So it's sometimes Silver Can, sometimes Peach Pit. What yeah, the fans energy. are smart. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. they're doing the reading. One hundred percent, and the writing. <laughs> What would you, um, do you have any idea what like a peach pit or a silver can would look like? What sort of vibe or energy would they give off? I think, I don't know. I think that's up to them. I, I think like it's definitely a lot of pink. Like a lot, I love when my fans come dressed in like all pink and they have the glitter and like, it's, it's really cute. Like there was a girl at my show, um, just recently at a festival and she was all pink and she was at the very front and she had pink crutches as well. Like that was so cute. She decked them out in all pink and I was like, oh my God, I love that so much. That's really cute. The extra mile. We love to mm. see it. And for the Silver Cans, who might be keen to come along to this tour mm. that you've just announced, yes. what can they expect from a Peach Live show if they've not been to one yet? If they've not been to one, um, it, I mean, obviously a lot of pink, as always. Um, there'll be some new songs from my new EP that's coming out in April, so some stuff that um, hasn't been really out anywhere, but they'll get to see it live, so that'll be really fun. Yeah, it'll just be a big party. Everyone's really sweet, so it'll be fun. And are you excited to do some new material? Like, try it, try it out on a new crowd? Yes, I've got some, like, really, like, fun pop upbeat stuff that I can't wait to, like, sing live because I haven't done it yet, so it'll be a big party. And do you think, um, like, I know a common experience with artists is that when they get on stage, and sometimes it's a surreal moment to, like, hear crowds singing songs yeah back like word for word when that happens to you is it ever like a oh my god yeah I start crying usually <laughs> I, like whenever people sing heavy back to me like I, I start bawling because I'm like what the hell like <laughs> like I heard that <laughs> yeah it's, it's almost like imposter syndrome where I'm like it, it makes sense to hear people sing other songs that I've heard but when it's my songs I'm like that's just something silly that I did like that. yeah <laughs> that's like a little journal entry like you're not supposed to know all that like like that like all the words to it. I'm like, that's so wild. But it's really, really touching. Yeah, the way that we've talked about the peach bit as well, I wouldn't be surprised if you tried new material and there's like a few that are just like, yeah, yeah. that's word what I was for just word. Thinking. Yeah, like there's <laughs> just like from little TikTok clips, like there was one girl that was like, um, one of my songs called Favorite Person and she was like up the front, like crying and she was on someone's shoulders singing all the words. And I was like, how do you know this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's so crazy. It was really sweet though. And like, we've spoken about like what you feel comfortable like revealing online to your audience you've sprinkled in a little bit here and there about your current relationship how do you go with talking to your partner about like what exactly you're going to reveal about that relationship and is there any is there ever any like trepidation between the two of you of like are we gonna put this out Mm. do we want to keep this to ourselves yeah I think um like she's pretty cool about me being like just I guess about the fact that I'm in a relationship I can talk about that and like and because it's influential in my music and the songs that I've written about her and obviously Perfect For You was written about her so I I felt like it was important that I put light to that but I think um because she's not out so it's, it's something where like it's not like too hard for me to think about what things I don't add of just like pretty much all of it isn't, <laughs> isn't yeah or said but it's just yeah it's it's a relationship but not the person that they yeah. Know. yeah and what I've loved as well which 
I deeply relate to and look at your comment sections a lot of people also deeply relate to is just the like deep um obsession that comes with a first like relationship with a woman which yeah. I have also <laughs> experienced um how has that like yeah translated into your music and how do you find writing about queer relationships differs to like mm. relationships with men yeah it's it's a huge difference that like I even now like still think is so funny that I think about when I'm writing music and all the songs that I've written about women and like my current relationship is so just like I love her so much and I'm so in love and she's magic and then the songs I've written about men like while dating them has been like god he's a bit annoying (laughs) (laughs) I don't know about this one yeah and then like when we break up they're like pretty scathing and mean like the one that I'm um putting out in a few days that I've been promoting called F You Goodbye is about like it's a, a pretty far gone ex now but at the time like when I wrote it it was just like this I was still dating men and I was so angry and it was such a I can mean sort of song. I mean, he deserved it, but like, it's a mean song. <laughs> and I'm like, I just could never imagine writing something like that about a woman. I mean, knock on wood, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> I would be like excited for. I feel like that's like maybe an untapped genre is like generous queer breakup songs of being like, <laughs> yeah. it was just timing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was amicable. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't you, it was me. It was both of us. <laughs> yeah. Just didn't work out. Right person, wrong time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like that would be a lesbian breakup song, honestly. True. I feel like I'm in some sort of loop because uh, I live with two of my really good friends. Well, one of my good friends... Um, who I've known for years and her girlfriend and it's just us three in the house. So I feel like I'm kept in the loop with like TikTok lesbian drama. <laughs> it never ends. And, and uh, there was this one artist who had broken up with like this very big YouTuber. They used to be like a pair and then they made like this. Um... I like how you're explaining this to us as though we don't know exactly what you're talking about. Well, I'm hoping that one of you interjects and is like... <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> right? Okay. And my housemate was like, no shade, no tea, but like, the song's a bop. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? like, Wait, maybe I'm thinking of something else because I don't know if there's a song involved. Wait. I mean, I'm thinking about the like Fletcher oh, situation. Okay. Becky's so it. hot. That's right, it. yes. Okay, do, I do That's know that. That's it, Becky's so hot. Are you on like girlfriend. TikTok lesbian drama? Yeah, TikTok. I was thinking like further down the line with the like JoJo series. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Are you on like niche tiktok i'm on it i'm in it around it i'm all up, like it's everything like, it's all i see on tiktok it's my own fault because you I'm are like, the captain of like <laughs> I'm in she's store. making the she's making the cats a finsta <laughs> so, i've been posting the compilations it's me is it weird ever seeing people make those videos about you and they're like speculating or like even interesting comment sections like being like this is actually what's happening and you're yeah, just like i can read this you know i know there was one recently where somebody thought that i was dating fletcher or miley because um of the like new year's thing and someone made a video being like this is so peach coated because like she did this the paris hilton song and then paris came out and fletcher was there and i was like what kind of power do you think i have over this situation that they're like coding some peach stuff in there like and then i i just like was like joking and replied and said you don't know how right you are and everyone just went off and was like oh my god so it has to be like either fletcher or miley that she's dating i'm like yeah it does actually it's one of the two (laughs) See, this is that's why, like, my housemates are like, Tyron, this is only the tip of the iceberg of like <laughs> the, these TikToks. I'm like, this is enough. We've been talking for an hour, babe, about yeah, Fletcher. Like, it snowball. There was like people making like whiteboards with like all these different connections because it really spiraled into like, I think it's still going. Like, there's still drama happening from it. I mean, oh speaking about the, the, the queer community, I feel like since coming out publicly, I've seen. You you honestly look like you have the most incredible friendship group, which is filled with plenty of like iconic Australian musicians and queer artists. How has that community been having that support around you, particularly in the time since coming out publicly? It's been so nice, honestly. Like I've I was worried like moving to Sydney that I wouldn't make a lot of friends because I had to leave like the strip club community that I had behind like all of those girls that were like my sisters, and then I didn't really have that sort of community to go into again. Like I hadn't come out as a lesbian and I hadn't really done a lot of like music yet like in that whole scene so I was kind of just like at home and I was like I don't know if I'm gonna make any friends here but now it's like it's been really really nice to have that like community of people like Maya and G Flip and and yeah just like all those artists that I'm now friends with that are really really sweet so it's nice. Could we ever see a collab with either of those artists or any others coming? Okay watch this space. (laughs) Listen in. How do I guess 
This probably might be a stupid question, but I guess like, how do those friendships come about? Because like, when you move to a, a new city, and you're like, I don't know what to do. With me, I'm a bit like, mm, I'll just wait for someone to like talk to me. <laughs> like sometimes I get a bit like, Ugh. Um, but I feel like you found this great community. How does like, I guess yeah. How does it come about? Yeah, I think honestly, it was more just sort of like. Um, like industry events, like more like corporate sort of mm. stuff that have like listening things. Like what are, what are they called? Where they have like somebody performs like a new single or something and they invite all the like little showcase people. moment. Yeah, yeah, showcase, yeah, yeah. 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 And so I went to a couple of those and they'd be there and we kind of all just mingle, like people are drinking and you just get talking and then they start inviting you to other gigs and stuff like that. And it just, yeah, happened naturally that way. Oh, and obviously God. like social media is another thing. Like, yeah. How has that been as well? I saw that you were in LA last year and connecting with some like of my fave queer TikTokers and like people there. How has that been as well? Like branching out even beyond Australia to like making this network of like friends around the world. Yeah, it's been it, it's been really nice. Like I think a lot of them I was friends with before I even made my friends that I have here in Sydney because it was like during COVID and that's when we all sort of had a little moment on TikTok and it was nice to connect with them and then actually like a year or two later go over there and meet them all. So that was really, really nice. And I still stay in contact with a lot of them. Hopefully. And not being catfished or like <laughs> yeah. <that>. like <laughs> yeah, kind of, oh my God, that would have been a spin out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like watching their TikToks and I get there, I'm like, what? <laughs> Hold on. They're, yeah, it does happen. They're like, I mean, not with their like being a whole different person physically, but like they, there is a lot of people that are completely different than they are online and it is a bit trippy when you're like- That would be bizarre. Yeah, their Anyone whole personality that we would there. know? Maybe, but I'm not gonna you don't have to spill details. <laughs> She's a professional. Stop that off Damn the, it. Off the record. Maybe. <laughs> do you have a um, do you have like a, a favorite TikToker at the moment? Is there someone's content that you're just absolutely loving? Yeah, and I, it's the same person every single time I'm asked. Is Brittany Broski? Like I love her so much, and I always have. Like I worship that woman. Like she, I've been in her house before, and like she, like not in a. <laughs> she didn't know that I was there. Well, she didn't. Okay. <laughs> she didn't know. Like, that's the thing. It's like, it's like you know, bathroom and then like, Benny, like, don't hate me, but I'm here. Um, but yeah, because I'm friends with her housemate Sarah, so I went over um, before we went out one night. But Brittany wasn't home, and I was like, she's like, you can like, use her bathroom if you want. I was like, that's so weird, but like I will. <laughs> like that's so weird. I do need to pee though. So like. I'll be back. <laughs> And speaking of like fan interactions, obviously that's coming from you being the fan. Have you had some special moments with people who are fans of your stuff? As in like music or content or just any like particular? Like have they been in my bathroom? <laughs> have they been in your bathroom? <laughs> have you gone I mean, to your bathroom? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. no, no, I or just at a show? Yeah, I've had so many like really special moments with, with fans. Like they're so beautiful. Like I... I like meet them when I'm out and stuff, even like just not at shows and stuff. They're really, really sweet. Like they're the most respectful, like considerate people. And I love when they come up and they'll like often share stories about how like either my videos or music is um, connected with them. And I had a girl run up, to, run up to me in the rain once, like when I was like just like hung over outside of a bottle shop. <laughs> and she kept running up. The, like she got out of her car and came and she's like, "Hey!" She hugged me and I was like, "Oh hi!" <laughs> like it was really cute. So yeah, I've lots of sweet moments with them. Even oh. in your mask disguise, you can't escape this. <laughs> Even in your mask Even disguise, though. that, that <laughs> message of you being like... Oh, yeah. Um, or in the lesbian fit, yeah. Sent to like a, a crush, was it? Yeah. Like years ago being like, I look so lesbian today. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The way you said that. I love it. I love it. Was it. Like, oh, God, I think I love it. What do you think? <laughs> but, yeah, um, they still give me shit about that. <laughs> They, they were the one that sent it to me, like, remember this? And I was like, I did. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. I think about it almost every single night when I'm trying to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do some pretty crazy stuff for, like, people we're crushing on. Huh? Yeah, well, I didn't know that I even, like, liked girls. I think I knew, but, like, hadn't told anybody yet. So I was, like, and they were, like, the only open lesbian. So I was, like, and also, like, I liked them. It wasn't just that was why. But, um, but yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they were just there. It's giving very baby gay, like <laughs> only lesbian I know. <laughs> Feeling very lesbian today. Um, yeah. Would you agree? <laughs> <I'm a lady. laughs> I love it. Do you? Oh God, and I was wearing like like crocheted thongs, <laughs> <laughs> like boho like sandals, and I was like, it's giving man. Trend forecasters, <laughs> <laughs> you hearing this? Bring it back. Like crochet for the backwards cap. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Look, the reason we're doing all this is for Sydney World Pride, which is basically like a big party. We are like having a bit of a DNM in the basement of said party. When you are at a party, who? 
are you at the party? Like, what is your persona or, like, what is your role? Are you the one having the DMs? Mm. Are you the one that's, like, at the snack table? Are you the one that's, like, in the corner with, like, Starting the dog the that's for some floor. reason at the party? Have you thrown yeah. the party? I haven't because I'm too disorganised and I actually <laughs> just want to be feral and I don't want to have to be a host. Like, I just want to, yeah, be that. a mess. But... Uh, I don't know. It depends what part of the night it is. <laughs> but, um, but I, I love, I love good dance. I usually start pulling out the stripper moves, and my girlfriend always reminds me. She'll show me every day. Like, you were teaching everyone how to twerk, and I was like, again. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I know that was last week. She's like, no, that was last. Yeah, that was last time. Like, it was good. Um, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I love, yeah, and yeah, I usually do a bunch of floor work. I'm like. <laughs> Which I wake up with a bunch of bruises on my knees, and I'm like, oh, I was doing the floor work again. Like, oh, <laughs> that routine. Yeah, doing that old chestnut. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's usually what I'm doing: dancing, having fun. Amazing. Yeah. Speaking of, should we get back to the party? <laughs> I thought you were going to say speaking of. Speaking of, I guess. Clear the table. Clear the table. Oh, I feel oh, fine. Yeah, look, people will be, but you'll need to cut the cameras before that. So yeah. look, Peach, thank you so much for coming through and thank having a DM with us. It's been a bloody pleasure. Thank you.